The year is 2005. You just left the mall movie theater after a screening of the cinematic masterpiece known as Robots. Hey kids, get a load of this! Eager to maximize the amount of fun that could be had on this outing, you scan the retail horizon for your next target. After locking eyes with a GameStop just a few stores down, you ask your dad if you can go inside. He says not to be gone any longer than 15 minutes, which was alright because that's all the time you needed. He wanders off into Circuit City to look for a new 5-disc CD changer, and you make a beeline for GameStop. You were here for the opportunity to command one of the most advanced pieces of portable technology that you had ever laid your eyes and hands on. The Sony PSP, conveniently affixed to a kiosk for your demoing pleasure. My DS is great, you thought, but this... This is on another level. And 17 years later, I'm still thinking the same thing. Okay, let's get one thing straight. The DS was amazing for what it was. It took portable gaming to the next level and innovated in ways that only Nintendo could. But the Sony PSP had a much simpler goal in mind. Make this into that. Sony didn't set out to make a portable game console. They set out to make a game console portable, and they did a damn good job. The PSP was leagues above the DS, especially the original DS, when it came to, well, anything that was not playing Nintendo games. And, uh, spoiler alert, this reason was very quickly invalidated. Graphics? We got them. Analog controls? We got those too. Removable storage? Hell yeah. Optical media? Weird flex, but okay. Friggin' TV out, dude? Hell yeah. I don't know, you wanna like, you wanna call grandma on the PSP, huh? You wanna call your grandma? Look at that, who's gonna stop you? PSP had some real wacky features too. You could even play your PS3 games with this thing remotely. That was a first party feature. And a lot of these things left modders drooling over the potential of the PSP as a platform for homebrew and emulation. And remember, this was 2005. You couldn't just hop onto AliExpress and pick up the first 401 video game console retro portable mini handheld game 3.0 inch color LCD kids color game player built in 400 games that you saw. We had limited resources to work with here, and the PSP was looking incredibly appealing to fill that void. Unlike the DS, the PSP doesn't really have a digital cartridge slot to play games from, just a weird proprietary optical drive, so devices such as a flash cart were kind of completely out of the question. And I do hear you saying, wait, didn't you say earlier that there was removable storage? And yes, there was, but... For the majority of PSPs out there, you couldn't just slap an emulator on the memory stick and call it a day. Programs that you run from the memory stick have to be digitally signed by Sony in order to run. And Sony had no interest in allowing emulators and such to run on their console. So that's it then, right? We just say GG to Sony, wrap up our controller, and go home? No, this is where the greatest thing in video game console modding history comes into play. The soft mod. There have been many, many of them over the years, and it's not exclusive to the PSP. On my PSP, I'm running the Pro C2 custom firmware. It's kind of the gold standard nowadays. Custom firmware is kind of like a hacked system update that does all the heavy lifting for you. And after it's installed, that's it. You just load up your memory stick with homebrew. But... What homebrew? Like the DS, you've got a few basic categories of things that you can do with a homebrew-enabled PSP. You've got community-made games and applications to check out, retro consoles you can emulate, and backups you can play. Which is a very G-rated way to say that you're just gonna pirate the shit out of the entire PSP library. Okay, I'm actually gonna take one step back now to show off something that you actually don't need a modded PSP to do. Web portals were all the rage back in the day. Didn't have a Windows Vista computer? Well, pff, look at that, now you do. Wished you bought the inferior game console? Well, gee, look, there it is, now you did. Web portals on the PSP are just little tiny self-contained websites that you can load up from the memory stick on the built-in PSP web browser. All it really was is a little HTML, some JavaScript, a pinch of Shockwave player, nothing the browser couldn't handle. It's just a fun little toy more than anything else, but it's something I completely forgot that I used to do until I started doing research for this video, and I wanted to show it off to anyone that never got a chance to check these out back in the day. Most of them were just made to simulate another electronic device of the time, like Windows Vista, the DS, and there's an iPhone one out there too that I remember playing around with. I found a video of it here, but the download links are all long gone. And if anybody happens to have the files for the iPhone web portal for PSP, send me an email with it because I'd actually love to give it a go one last time. 
Here's something that you do need a properly soft-modded PSP for. Minecraft, like Doom, is kinda just on everything now, including an unofficial version called Lamecraft here on the PSP. Like DSCraft on the DS, Lamecraft's lack of analog stick camera input really degrades the experience and makes the whole thing kinda frustrating to use. These shaders here are actually a really nice touch though, and I think the lighting looks really good. It's a neat little proof of concept and not much more, very similar to the DS version. Okay, this one is an early 2000s classic, Jelly Car. I played the WiiWare sequel of this game when I was a kid, but this one plays pretty similar to what I remember. Oh, and Jellycar 2, the one that I've played, was an actual game that was published for the PSP at the time, but Jellycar 1, which is what this is a port of, was only ever developed for the Xbox 360, iOS, and Windows. This homebrew port of the first game is using the Xbox 360 version as a base, and it's developed by the same guy that made Lamecraft. It's a pretty fun little game. I think that the official sequel probably plays a little bit better, but that's to be expected, and I'm still just glad it's here. Okay, this one is a little bit bizarre. Your eyes do not deceive you. This is Halo on the Sony PSP. Okay, well, your eyes do deceive you like a little bit because it's actually Quake, albeit a very heavily modded homebrew port of Quake, and it's, uh, it's Halo, I guess. I could not even get past these two dudes right here at the beginning, to be honest with you. The PSP just really falls flat with first-person shooter controls. It just needs another analog stick so bad. Either way, this homebrew is really wacky and cool, and I thought it was worth a mention, but I don't recommend trying it yourself. It's just kind of... it's just kind of there. Okay, admittedly, the homebrew games that we've tried so far have been a little bit hit and miss. I know for a fact that there are way better ones out there that are worth trying, but to be honest, I didn't really dabble in that kind of community back in the day. Like homebrew community made games and all that, it, my interest was in emulation. A couple videos ago when we checked out the DS, it did its best, it wasn't too bad, but the PSP, I, well okay, let me just put it into perspective here. The PSP has a DS emulator. Truthfully, it's not very good and most games are completely unplayable, but the fact that it can even emulate its rival at all is a huge slap in the face to Nintendo, and it's just a testament to how freaking overbuilt this thing was when it came out. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. All right, let me tell you what PCBWay does. They specialize in prototyping and low volume production of printed circuit boards, you know, these things. They really are a one-stop shop for all your electronic prototyping needs. They do standard PCBs, advanced multi-layer HDI PCBs, flex PCBs, and the cherry on top is that they'll even give you the option to have them pre-assembled for you at their factory. And in addition to PCBs, they're also branching out into some new services that includes 3D printing and CNC machining. Personally, I am really excited to give those services a try, since I've always wanted to have the shells of my projects printed professionally. And CNC machining? Oh my god, it could open up a world of new options for custom heat sinks in my mini consoles. I am so excited that I get to work with PCBWay. New users get a $5 welcome bonus on their first order, and 10 PCBs are just $5, so it's literally just free. Plus, their build time is only 24 hours. Pre-assembly services start at $30 for 10, plus you get free global shipping. And if anything I talked about piqued your interest, head down to the link in the description to see what PCBWay can offer you. The traditional emulators are all here as well. We have NES, Game Boy, even DOS boxes on this thing. SNES emulation in particular is very decent. The PSP runs most SNES games at full speed without a care in the world. While the DS over there kind of just like shits its pants and then dips out. Sick. Genesis performance is very tight, no complaints to be had here. Really, consoles of these calibers don't put up much of a fight on the PSP. GBA is fantastic as well, and to be honest, this is the first way I really played some of the old GBA Pokemon games when I was a kid. The PSP form factor is actually just perfect for it, and it upscales really nicely. And once again, no performance issues whatsoever, it's like the PSP was just purpose-built for this. Now here is where the PSP gets to stretch its legs and show off a little. N64 is pretty trivial to run on the PSP, at least for the games that do run on it. The compatibility list is just okay. A lot of the big hitters though are running really really nice here, if not perfect, minus a few texture glitches. N64 games translate over to the PSP pretty well because it's you know, just a single analog stick, and the control layout is only missing a few buttons compared to the N64 controller. It's usually not a problem though because of the way the N64 controller is held. Shout out 
out to everyone that does not have three hands, you're the ones that are making it work here. And I can't talk about emulators on the PSP without mentioning the official PS1 emulator. So the PSP natively supports a lot of PS1 games. Uh, you could purchase them on the PlayStation Store back in the day, just like any other game. And obviously the officially supported games run great, and the list of games that made it over is pretty staggering. Having the PSP run PS1 games was a huge selling point for the PSP, at least for me. Sure, the DS could run its previous gen games, but the PSP could run previous gen home console games. Sony drew a line in the sand on where the boys and the men stood with that one. Anyways, eventually the official emulator was cracked wide open. You could inject any CD-ROM image of a PS1 game that you wanted into the games. It would end up leaving you with a nice little clean way to play any of your favorites that were missing. And you got to have separate game icons on the home screen for all those titles as well. It was pretty cool. There's a lot of community assembled ports of exclusive DLC for other consoles like Tomb Raider Unfinished Business. I'm pretty sure that was a Tomb Raider DLC that never made it over to the PS1, but someone decided to throw it together as a PS1 file, so there you go, now you can just play it on the PSP. The official emulator on this thing is some black magic. The rule is essentially, if you have the bin in queue, the PSP will play it. Meanwhile, step inside me ship, I'm going to show you a wonderful world of games that you can play all you want and you won't even have to pay a dime. <laughs> <coughs> But no, seriously, these things are dumb, and these things are good. Say it with me, everybody. Optical, Optical media, media bad. Playing official games off the memory stick is the way to go. Also, this is gonna be a complete dumbass moment on my part, but when I was a kid and I got my first PSP, I thought that the shell on the outside of the UMDs was just a casing that could be opened and removed. So I kind of just pried one open because I needed to clean the disc. And then I quickly found out that they do not snap back together. So I kind of just scotch taped it back together and and like it kind of worked But the game always had some weird issues after that like it just wouldn't load some levels I think it was like Wally, -E, but uh, yeah optical media is a mistake Especially with children, but anyways nowadays you can just toss your games in dot iso format onto your memory stick And that's pretty much it. They'll just show up right on the menu easier than ever ISO dumps for PSP games are plentiful out there on the internet, so go ahead and just go download the tool to dump the games that you own so you can play them legally and stay safe from legal harm. This is a message from Legal Disclaimer Bot 9000. The PSP to me holds a place in my heart that the original Xbox also occupies, but you know, like a little off to the side because it, it's a home console and the PSP is portable, so you know. Oh, look at that. There's even like some Bionicles in here. This is sick. Anyway, by that I mean that it's a platform with exceptional hardware for the time that got cracked wide open by modders and it let you really realize the whole system potential. The PSP may not have won any sales awards for Sony, but it sure won a place in the hearts and minds of gamers like myself, who couldn't get what the PSP was offering anywhere else. I still think that to this day it's a fantastic platform for homebrew on the go, you know, like with emulation and all that, and with smartphones, Nintendo Switches, and Steam Decks being the size of what they are now, it's looking like a lot more viable of an option to just keep a PSP in your pocket with you, you know, whenever you get those gamer urges, if you know what I mean. Alright, I want to give my patrons a shout out for being the awesome people that they are, as well as PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. And you know what, screw it, while we're at it, I'm gonna shout out the entire Brengish Studios community as a whole. You guys are actually the best YouTube community that I've seen in ages. I, I get like a really good laugh out of some of the comments I see that you guys are leaving on my videos. And I also see some really good suggestions and feedback with what I'm trying to do here. So thanks everyone. You know, we actually have a lot of fun out here over on the studio main page. We vote on daily polls that are part of larger tournaments. We finished up one already that was for the best video game OST, which Super Mario Galaxy ultimately won understandably. There have been some real spicy matchups, and I will admit I've, I've shed a few tears myself. We've, we've lost some good weapons. But anyway, it's a good time. That's it for this video. Let me know some of the best memories you have with the PSP scene back in the day in the comments, and I will see you in the next one.